What's going on, guys? How are y'all tonight? Hey, Brad. We're good, buddy. How you doing? Man, I tell you what, all I need to do is schedule some kind of live <laughs> event or anything like that. And I believe yeah. it, it's kind of like a uh, Indian song dance to make it rain and storm because every time I want to do it, that's what happens, seems like. But we'll let it some don't. people get in and uh, I let you guys do a little introduction and uh, we'll get this party started. Well, guys, good. as you join in, like every week when I try to do anything live, make sure you go ahead and hit that 10K crappie connection. Uh, it kind of helps everything get generated in the system to say. So I see about 13, 14 people joining in. So y'all come on in, comment as you get in, and we got some really cool stuff to talk about tonight. And uh, I'm ready to get this party started. Me too, yeah. buddy. Looking forward to it. Hey, David. Appreciate everybody having some patience tonight. Like I said, we had some storms roll through and caused a little havoc on all this wonderful technology we got. Uh, but we got it worked out. <clears throat> Let's see. We got about 30 something people, so we'll kind of get this party started. Um, got the man on the Baby blue top hat t shirt. Do a little introduction to yourself, Dustin. Derek and uh, Derek, Dustin. Hey now. Uh, Derek Martin, owner of Top Hat Jigs, live in Mount Pulaski, Illinois, Central Illinois. Uh, for those of you, I think most everybody probably knows, but those of you don't know, that's just a, a picture of our bait. That's what we make two inch, inch and a half, multiple colors. Kind of, um, when did you start this company? Can we get a little back? 2000, 2021, we kind of started it in 20 a little bit, but we took off really big in, in 21 once we, uh, I guess, knew we had something that was going to be pretty good and then yeah. hit the ground running. Uh, so three, four years, really, and it's been a, it's been a whirlwind. <laughs> Absolutely. Good little baits, um, you know, and I'm going to let this man on the bottom right do an introduction, kind of Jeff, and tell us who you are, what you do, and where you're from. Well, my name's Jeff Jowers. I'm right here from, I'm located in central Alabama. I, uh, I actually guide uh, on Coosa River, primarily on Lay. Um, been doing that a, co a couple of years. Um, before that, I got, I was living in Orange Beach and got doing offshore trips, so hmm. uh that's where it's at. Buddy. Absolutely, man. I appreciate you coming on tonight. And, you know, I've heard some really cool things about you. We've never actually, I don't believe, met each other in person or on the phone or anything else. But I hear you like to play with baits a lot and kind of tinker with them. I do. I do. That's something I do uh, about every day. Um, I deal, I, you know, primarily I'm, I'm, I got blackfish here. That's the dominant mm -hmm. species here on the Coosa chain. I wish I could tell you I had two and three pound white swimming, uh, white fish swimming around, but, uh, you know, those blackfish that they're a whole different animal. They get finicky. Uh, they like, uh, different. Some days I can get them to eat a three inch bait. And then some days I have to cut it down. And, uh, colors, I use spike it a lot. I, I, I you know, dip the tails. Um, I don't know if that really plays a big factor in them as much as it does me. That's for my confidence. If I'm more confident in a bait, I'm going to fish it more thoroughly. Uh, but far as the profile, big believer in it. So, yes, uh, you know, for instance, like on these top hats, and I don't know if y'all can see that real good, but I'll, uh, I'll uh, take those and, and nip the little tail. Um, sure, I use a lot of the, uh, the old, uh, inch and a half and then i'll put the little v in the tail and as you can see I've, I've dipped that one and that's just for my confidence really as far as colors go i'm not a big color guy i've, I've got every color made and every bait made uh from barbecue chicken to you know but i i have a go-to box that i've got about four or five baits and they're all natural and mm -hmm. I, I stick with that you know it seems to me that especially when we're talking about predominantly black crappie, they are way more finicky as far as my experience fishing. You know, a black crappie can be extremely finicky, and they'll follow baits, follow baits, and, you know, they make you do things right. 
and my mindset is, you know, not only the profile, the color, you got to have even the action right, or they'll just swim up to it and turn around and leave. So black crappie is probably, as far as crappie fishing goes, a little bit more difficult for me to catch day in and day out. They, they can be. Uh, you know, my favorites are whites. That's why I'm in love with that Grenada so much. I mean, there's nothing, <laughs> nothing bad to me, but these black fish, they're beautiful. I love to catch them, uh, especially those big ones. Um, but yes, the, you, you have, I pay attention to them a lot and their mannerism will tell me a lot about what I need to do uh, as far as life's concerned. If I can cast to those fish and I watch their mannerism, sometimes they'll follow me for three seconds. Sometimes they'll follow me all the way to the foot of that trolling motor. And then, but if I can look at, if she gets vertical with me and that tail's shaking like a happy dog, oh, I know yeah. you don't commit to it. So that's what I'm looking for. And if that, and if something's not right and she turns away, then that's when I'll start alternating the bait, you know, downsizing. Sometimes it's upsizing. and I've had them where they won't touch a little bitty bait and I throw something like this, you know, a bigger swim, swim bait and they'll choke it. But every day is different with them. They're real temperamental fish. But that's the point. That's the fun thing about it. Yeah. Do you have, I mean, like me up right now, I'm holding some just a braided pair. I forget any Smiths is actually the manufacturer of these scissors that I use a lot on my boat. And uh, one thing I cannot do is forget putting them back in here. But, you know, modifying these baits, and that's kind of what our topic comes into tonight. You know, I'm sitting here playing with this bait right now and cutting on it. And it's so dynamic to be able to just sit here and I'm not trying to block the screen there or anything, but I'm, I'm working on this bait to show you how quick you can modify this, this bait with a pair of scissors. Do you have any special tools that you like to use as far as, you know, clipping on these baits and such? You know, I don't, I have, uh, actually what I have in my boat that lays on the deck is, uh, is you know the scissors that you cut cut meat with it's like you cut chicken wings off a of breast yeah. or something like that you i guess i think you can buy them at the dollar store just a big old black pair of burly looking scissors and i have those yeah there you go yep see i just whacked on that one for one second but you know <clears throat> i guess when we come to modification baits wise what's you said you have a, a core group of colors what's some of the main colors that you're using down there on the coast of river well, I'll tell you what, you know, if, if you go back to early in the year, which is my favorite time, January, February, I target these pre, these fish are in the pre-spawn mode. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking for them on flats right off the, uh, you know, right off the creek channel. And they'll stage up. The water's usually, we got a lot of rain then, so the water's got some color to it. And I'm not going to say it's, there's times where it's you color or coffee color, uh, but they'll stage up and, uh, when it gets that color, I tend to throw maybe, uh, say it's cloudy day, the water's got a good good stain to slightly muddy. I'll throw a darker color. I might go to something like that black with a chartreuse. Uh, but for the most part, um, as we get into this time of year, it gets to be to where it gets gin clear. I mean, it gets too clear. And, uh, I always stick with something like uh, when it comes to top hat, something like the sparkle or the blue pearl. Um, if it comes to uh, Bobby Garland bait, if, if it, you know, I'm going to stick with uh, Diamond Mist, uh, Glitter Critter is a good one. Uh, uh, and always, and everybody's got it. You know, it's the tried and true, that monkey milk. And, uh, but I'm gonna tell you one, and and this was one from uh, Bobby Garland. I don't know what happened. I mean, it's like a it's like a good cereal. You go to Publix, you find a good cereal, you can't get enough of it, and then come to find out they discontinued it. What in the world ever happened to uh, to Butterbelly? I mean, that's the best one they got, and you can't find it. It's this done, you know. It's, but it's colors like that. That's what I'm gonna. That's what I'm gonna be using. A lot of natural tones. <clears throat> now, from like my experience, and kind of a general rule for me is. And, you know, I'd be really interested since you mainly target blackfish and I mainly target whitefish, you know, on cloudy days, do you try to stick with glitter or non-glitter? I know for myself, I like a lot of glitter if it's sunny. If I've got sun out, I like glitter. If it's cloudy, I use, you know, baits that don't have a lot of glitter into them. 
Yeah. Is that kind of the same when it comes to these black crappie for you? It, it, yes, it, it is. Uh, if it's, if it's cloudy, dark conditions, um, I'm pretty much feeling pretty confident. And, and once again, this is just me. It's my confidence. So it makes me fish it a lot better. Uh, it's going to be a uh, cloudy day. It's going to be something more like your diamond mist, you know, where it's got the glacier bottom, but yet it's a laminate and it's got the silver sparkles on the top. Uh, I'm, I'm highly confident with colors like that. Uh, a lighter day, sunshine, I'm going to go with the clear baits like that, that sparkle with the top hat or something uh, blue ice. Can't beat it. I mean, it, they're going to they're gonna eat it. I'm trying to, I guess this color was what a hilltopper. Is that right, Derek? Yes. I smashed mm -hmm. them on that today. Man, that color for me with that little bit of glitter inside there, I'm sure you can kind of see it as I'm twisting it on screen, but I'm trying to get my camera lined up. But, you know, we're talking about modifications and that little profile right there, I done cut it down just with these scissors in a matter of seconds. And, you know, now it mimics <clears throat> what I would consider a baby shad profile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. A finger or, or, or whatever. But I know that people get stuck just saying, well, I've got this one bait and <clears throat> that's all the way I can use it. And I think that if you get fish and they're starting to follow that bait or even my mindset, I know I feel like I've got the right color, right profile, everything whenever I hook a fish and it's in the very back of its throat. Now, if I'm catching fish and it's just kind of lipping it and I'm hooking him right on the edge of his mouth, I know I've got something to keep on tweaking with that bait to really modify it to get it to for them to actually inhale it because there's a lot less chance a fish getting off if it's got it to the back of its throat. So that's just a, a quick little tip in my mind. So if you're catching a lot of fish and there's just barely you're barely getting them in the boat or you're having a lot of fish fall off, cut it down some. Yeah, Change you know, Brad, the, the first and easy modify before we go into the scissors, and I'll show you a couple different ones is, mm -hmm. I mean, there's some other baits, beaver bottoms, and some other baits like top hats that have this flat tail is earlier this year, I was fishing with England and we were going through colors trying to find the right color. And he had on a red and chartreuse uh bubba bug and i had on i think i had sparkles on jeff and matt was catching three fish to my none and so i'm <laughs> like you're about 10 minutes i'm like well i've had enough of this and so i said give me a bubba bug out of your tackle box and so i took a bubba bug out of his tackle box and instead of three to zero he was catching three to my one and i'm like what's the difference here like why are you catching more fish than me we pulled it up we pulled our baits up and he had his and what we call the minnow presentation so he had his tail like that. I had my tail flat like mm -hmm. the mermaid. I just turned my tail mm -hmm. sideways, and it, from that point on, it was game on. We we were catching, you know, fish fish to fish. But, you know, something as simple before you even get a pair of, a pair of scissors out is just turn that bait. But, yeah. you know, like you said, you had cut it. I had cut mine, mm -hmm. cut it shorter, and then... Another one I've seen people do with our baits. It's, I don't know if it's hard to see, but they've. There we go. They cut it in thirds almost. I can't see there. It's hard to hit. Hit that little screen in it. Oh yeah. Yeah. There, they, you know, just to give it. And I've seen them do more than that, you know, to make it stringy or whatever. Mm -hmm. But like you said, a pair of scissors, or I even not everybody has a pair of scissors. But if you're like my dad, he always he always has a think fingernail clippers around his neck. You know, mm -hmm. that works just as good to modify all that stuff. Jeff, you're getting a lot of comments on here, man. I think you got a little following going on tonight. <laughs> I might not want to hear some of them, buddy. But... <laughs> Bubba Bug. Bubba yeah. Bug. Bubba. How many colors right now out of Top Hat you got there, Derek? I've got in the in the two inch size, we've got 28 colors. <clears throat> In the inch and a half, we've got 15. We're slowly coming out with those, you know, kind of as demand speaks it. Um, you know, it's 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 kind of hit and miss. You know, Brad, you've talked about it a thousand times, and 
and Jeff does too. Jeff's got the finicky fish. And so inch mm -hmm. and a half has a time and a place. The two inch is still a more popular bait than the inch and a half. Uh, I'd say across the country when I see from my sales, but uh, we'll get there, you know, but. Well, you know, <clears throat> I think that in a couple of years ago, and uh, I was introduced to small baits and honestly, because I primarily fish for white crappie, my mindset was these small baits. And I mean, even I'm going to clip on this bait here, even a little bit more. This is the inch and a half top hat. And I'm going to make this bait extremely tiny. And I would tell you exactly. I mean, right now I've got it cut down. I'm going to get another bait out to kind of. My wife's not going to be happy because I'm going to have top hat jigs all over this table in here. But but I'm going to show you the difference in, in profiles here real quick. <laughs> I don't know how well I can line that up for you. But even this very small bait. I mean, right now I've got it probably three quarters of an inch. This bait right here would be absolutely deadly for me in the summertime. Right. And also hardcore winter. And I don't think people actually modify or change profiles or change up our mindset when it comes to crappie fishing uh, as much as they should. And so if you're out on the lake and you're not getting bit, you know, I'm sure Derek's going to keep making bait. So you're not going to, you know, run out of this color and you'll never find it again or, or anything like that. There's too many colors out there, but experiment. I, I think we as fishermen get in the mindset that, Hey, they're not biting. Let's go into the house. And, you know, I've had guide trips and I'm sure Jeff's the same way that, you know, it seems like nothing, you're doing is right, but if you just keep on grinding and grinding and playing with these fish and playing with these sizes of baits, that that one last piece of puzzle fit in and it'll start working. But I think a lot of times it's just by coming back and cutting them down, man. Just these these crappie and that, like I said, my fingernails. I don't have that big of hands, like not really anyway, but. Um, that little bitty bait, a two pound fish will inhale it. He'll choke it. Yeah, we've even taken that inch and a half, <laughs> taken that inch and a half bait and almost cut it off to where oh. it's almost tail. Yeah. Brad, I mean, we've even, yeah. and even, you can even trim the tail up like you had it and make it as, you know, you can make that thing as tiny as you want to make it. <laughs> Yeah. And, and, you know, I think people, especially when you get in this, these dog days of summertime and I honestly cannot wait because I'm, I'm ready for the spawn to be completely over with, but, uh, these dog days of, of fishing as far as the summertime, my key to success, I know for the last three summers was really, really small profile baits. And, you know, you're very easily able to obtain a small profile even if you buy the two inch or inch and a half, keep mm -hmm. going down in size if it's not working. Yeah. Uh, B and M fishing, they're saying they use baits as small as a one sixty fourth right now, and you know I tell definitely agree. Uh, Blake Phillips saying downsize line also that's that's very yeah. true. Well, it is. I, I just pulled up with uh, I'm fixing to hit that summer pattern now, and I've got two of my reels. Right, uh, I put the clear uh, four pound K9 on, and uh, you know, works just fine. It will generate a few more strikes by doing that. I got uh, Todd from YouTube, and Todd, we're going to help you out here tonight. <clears throat> he says, uh, he's having a lot of fish following my jigs, but would not eat anything. Yeah. Todd, I'd like to say, hey, so it goes back to the same thing is how small of a jig did you go to? Or like Jeff said earlier, did you upsize? It's the same token mm -hmm. on the same time things is uh, you, you, you didn't have anything. You didn't have everything right. And that's yeah. just the facts if they're following it. This yeah. is another thing we did in February. We were down there with uh, Chad at Grenada, Brad. You know, we, mm -hmm. well, of course, this is Mr. Crappies. But mm -hmm. I always have pink in my boat. I've got blue and I've got chartreuse. But we were using 
that hilltopper you showed earlier uh -huh. and we were catching some fish you know but this wasn't quite right and we used this pink and i don't i i did it i only did it half but it took that chartreuse tail to orange you know you mm -hmm. got to think back to your you know what makes blue yellow and green you know and so if you've got a chartreuse tail you know if that dipped in a white tail that had been pink but a chartreuse tail made it orange and man that made the world a difference we were dipping every hilltopper we had in pink and making it purple and orange because that's a color we don't offer but yeah it's real simple like having a pair of scissors in your boat having a jar of dipping glow or yeah, it will. It, it, and I've, I've probably got every bottle of spike it made on, on colors, even black. Um, and I'll double dip sometimes. If I want a fire orange, like uh, you take one of those tails and you dip it in the chartreuse and then dip it in the pink, it makes it it makes it like a, a fire orange. And uh, I seem to like to do that a lot when it's real muddy conditions, you, you know, something like Grenada, you know. You know, I see Mitch, he's uh, commenting and said he's got a color that he has killed him at every lake that he's been to. Mitch, spill the beans, bro. Because <laughs> I like to have that color myself. There you go. <laughs> Can I appreciate everybody getting on here tonight as usual? Make sure you hit that 10K Crappie Connection. little update on our YouTube side of things. I checked a little bit before the storm came through. We were at 8,300 subscribers on YouTube, so... If you guys are on there, uh, YouTube, make sure you hit, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for us. Ooh, that's good looking there, Derek. Yep. That's like what Jeff was talking. I did the pink yeah. white tail. I did the pink, and then I did this blue, and it made it purple. Yeah. You can kind of see the line, like a darker, darker shade of purple. But No, I know, especially when I long line a lot, you know, I'll start out with baits, and I'm, I guess we'll pick on the hilltopper tonight. It's a great color, but do you ever go back when you got a two-tone bait like this and say, all right, I'm going to try something so solid chartreuse and try something solid, this the purple glitter, red glitter? Have you ever experimented to the fact that, you know, you think it's the chartreuse that the fish are getting bit on or the the solid body up top have you i would think black crappie if, and that's kind of you know your expertise do they prefer a, a jig that has one solid color throughout it or do they like them when it's two-tone like that no i don't it, to be honest with you you know I'm, I'm, I'm just honest as i can be about it man um and yeah. this is all my opinion i don't think color plays a huge huge role in in as much as profile for me, um, mm -hmm. the, yeah, I put the spike it on on the back of something, but I think, to be honest, I think it's more for my confidence. I, mm -hmm. I think it's for me. I'm gonna fish it a little bit more thorough because I've got confidence in it. But I think it's more the the profile to you know just watching their reaction and all. Because I've had somebody throw the same bait. I've got my tail dip. They've got the same bait on, and they don't, and they catch just as many, if not more, than I do. And like I said, I think it goes back to the size of the bait more than it does the color. Of it. Now, when you're talking about, you know, what are the, some of the ways you modifying these jigs to get, you know, get them to swallow it? Is there anything you'll downsize as far as yeah, a hook? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, for instance, it, and, and, and this goes back to when you were saying, you know, when you're out there on guide, whether you're out there on guide trips or you're by yourself or whatever, and you're running around these fish or not, they're, you know, you say you pull up to this this brush pile. Uh, they're following you. They're nipping it. They're short strike, you know, whatever. And then, you know, you think, dear God, I've got to, you know, I've got to meet everybody's expectations when I do have a trip. So I want them to have a good time. So I'll, I'll milk run and, you know, keep my foot on the gas and I'll, I'll jump to different things. Well, I might go to a hump to where they're not on brush and my bigger fish are laying on, on the brake line off of a hump. And they're just all you can see. You got to look hard, but you'll see the little bumps on the bottom of the lake. And I'll they might be in. 15 to 18 foot of water, but I know they're good fish. I throw out there, I ca I, I'm a caster. I cast an eighth ounce jig head to them. 
I bring it over them. It, just say they're nipping at it, nipping at it. They're just not taking it. They're not committing to it. Well, at least they're showing me some attention. So if you have to change the jig head size and change it down to a 124th or a 132nd and cut that bait down, downsize that bait, then take a piece of split shot, not far up above it, just, you know, a few inches, put it above it to get that little bitty bait down to that depth quick cast and then bring it over them. And then you'll see I've had them come straight up off the bottom and just hammer it. And, and you know, I just downsize the whole thing, you know. You know, uh, Charles. All the way down to the jig head. I'm, I'm talking about I went from an eighth to, to something like a 132nd, but they choked it. Now, I haven't, I can't say I, I've really picked up on it very many times. But do you prefer particular color jig head? I, you know, I, I, I don't. Uh, I have, <laughs> I, I get after people all the time. You know, uh, I'll just some, you know, some jig heads I pour. Uh, uh, I've got my, you know, I'm a big eye hole guy. I do have probably every eye hole made. Um, ACC heads are great. Uh, and then I've got my own. Um, I do my own weedless. If it, it, you know, I do, I use a 60 pound monofilament and I modified my mold. So I put a 60 pound piece of monofilament with a light wire hook and I pour my own. There's days out there where I'll just tie that and I didn't paint it and I'll chunk it. Somebody with me will be fishing and we're chunking it, chunking it. And every few minutes they're down there. I hear them digging around in the box, rattling around something like, well, well hell, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change this pink head. And, I'm like, man, you. It's not. It's not about. I don't believe it's about. They're not that picky about that head. They're gonna eat. They're gonna eat. You know. So no. Uh, there's times, you know, I'll use an orange head, but no, I don't believe. But back then, going back, I don't believe it's the color. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't. What about like these black crappie? I, I've always been told, and you know, I know their mouth is smaller compared to a white crappie for yeah. sure. Yeah. What size hook do you like to uh, pair up, say, with a 116th? Or what's your general ideas on hook sizes when it comes to, you know, selecting? Oh, shit, man. Like a number four, probably light wire. Like Just that. on all of them. I got you. Yeah. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, if it's the weedless heads, I like the little bitty light wire. I might beat the hook up on them. If they're open water fish and I want to lean on them, uh, I'm going. You know, I, I will beat the hook up to a heavier gauge hook, and maybe a little bigger hook. That goes back to what what bait I'm throwing. You know, I got Charles Henderson. Him, he's one of my res buddies here, um, and he's asking, <clears throat> "Do you ever use a color selector?" No, we I, we had a conversation about that yesterday. I did with somebody about those color selectors, and uh, no, I have not. I have not ever used it. I have not either. Um, you know, I think that my general rule of things, whenever I start out a day and I'm looking to start out with a jig color, you know, darker days, darker colors, brighter days, brighter colors. That's kind of a general rule. Yeah. That a starting basis when I say that. Mm -hmm. um, just like the glitter, you know, if it's a cloudy day, let me see the color of this bait. Bubba bug, is that right? Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I would use this color on a dark, overcast day. And, and like I said, even when it comes back to this glittery bait, let me get back on screen. I would like that on a sunnier day. Yeah. So that's kind of my general rule on selecting baits is darker days, darker colors, brighter days. And this Lady May, you know, that would be a... a, a a brighter day that I would use that natural tone, light colored bait. Mm -hmm. Another thing, at least for, you know, the bodies of water that I seem to fish is that darker baits for black crappie kind of go hand in hand a lot of days. Yeah. And I don't know if that's a general mindset when it comes to black crappie, you know, white crappie, I use a lot of bright colors, say like the Grenada gold color and, yeah. Oh, solid orange and chartreuse but mm -hmm. i've kind of noticed with black crappie that you know you need those darker bait colors a lot of days for those fish 
you 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 do uh you know they don't they're uh, i'll tell you that what happened to me one time this went long ago too long ago they you know a white crappie loves mud they love it they thrive mm -hmm. in it and it's like they can see in it they just adapt to it good a black crappie does not i don't believe they just they just don't like that condition but sometimes they've got no choice but to be in it when we get a lot of rain and uh I got on some fish. Uh, it was one of these torrential downpours for a few days. The Coos River turned to chocolate milk, literally. I mean, logs, trees, dead deer floating down the channel. And in th this certain creek, uh, these fish, they, th th a few days before that, these fish were in schools. They're big schools. And you could just cast to them, and they let it all run and just annihilate you. Well, this muddy water screwed it up. And it blew those schools apart to where they were just isolated fish, which, which is the way I prefer to, to fish for them. And I got in there, and they were just staged up. And, uh, you know, you'd see a quarter shining over here and a quarter over here. Well, I, like I said, I'm a caster. So I would cast, throw it past her, bring her in. And as soon as I'd come around her, you would see her. She would, she'd turn, she'd just be looking for it, just looking for it. And I thought, God, she, I, I, she can't see it. So then I, I change the color to a darker color and I throw about the same thing. So she'd just start looking for it. But you, she was just looking all crazy, frantic about it. And I said, golly, and as much as it pained me, I had to pick up that long rod. And yeah. uh, I picked that dang thing up and then I just put on one of, you know, your typical, uh, you know, the black and blue. And what I had to do is I had to get in front. Of, I had to, I could ease up on her because it was so muddy and I'd have to hold that jig right there above her and then with the line in my left hand i had to take my fingers and work that line and pop that line and snap it a little bit and all of a sudden you'd see her she'd just she'd nose up on it and that tail got to wagging like a happy dog and i would she'd sit there and stare at it just be bouncing and i knew then she was going to connect and all of a sudden she would throttle you so what was happening she wasn't seeing it and that lateral line was picking up the vibration and she'd start looking for it you know, she just couldn't see it in that water because, you know, those black rocket, they're just not like a white. They don't adapt to that so well. But hell, I threw every color, all, you know, textbook stuff, black, chartreuse, black, and just couldn't see it. But, yeah, you're right. I mean, I th it is a good color all around for black for black rocket, you know, it, <laughs> it helps you darker, darker conditions. But Another thing, I, I'm going to go to this real quick, and I got the question. Mm -hmm. It's from YouTube. Sun up, sundown fishing. I like the I like the name there, man. Yes. Um, <laughs> but how do you dock your baits with a post front? And I would assume just like you know, tomorrow would be a post front because we got a lot of storms and a front moving through here tonight. You know, yeah. for me, it goes back to every day's different, no matter if it's it a it post front or before a front or during a front, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, I'll just get out there and keep on experimenting. With it will. But there's no general rule in my mind that you need to doctor it a, a certain way because it's a post front. No, you know, not, not this time of year. I, I mean, mm -hmm. a post front situation this time of year is not going to be as effective, you know, as bad as is is one that's going to be in January, you know, because you pay attention to your nights, you know, they're not. I mean, it's it's not dr dropping that dramatic to change that water, to, to you know, to to make you alternate anything that you were doing yesterday. But there's times where a post front, I've seen them turn on. It it, it made them more great. Mm -hmm. you know? Well, definitely want to thank, you know, Derek, and he's got a special little treat that I'm going to wait and let him throw it out there in a second, but definitely want to thank Top Hat Jigs for sponsoring this tonight and having Jeff on here as well and kind of having this discussion when it comes to modifying baits because it's something that needs to be talked about. But Derek, what do you got going for everybody watching and or listening to even in the future? Yeah, yeah, uh, in connection with – you know, with you, Brad, and the Crappie Connection, we appreciate your support and everything. And we're giving uh, everybody watching, listening tonight, a 15% discount on uh, Top Hat Jigs Guppy Gobblers on the website, tophatjigs.com. The code is right there on the screen, 10K mm -hmm. Crappie Connection, 15% discount code. And we're going to, it's it's live now, and we're going to run it now and through the end of month, to the end of May. So we appreciate everybody's support. Like I said, when you place that order, go in 10K Crappie Connection. 
And that's the website. I'm throwing it on there as well. It's www.tophatjigs.com. Uh, go ahead and get you some. And I'm telling you, man, this Hilltopper, I can tell you right now, that's going to be a Ross Barnett smoking killer. And I'm sure it is in a lot of different lakes. But yeah. you know, I, I, I have a little thing for this bait. I have to tell you, Derek, I, I really <laughs> like that color a lot. You know, Brad, you and Jeff were talking about, and I had it here when we were talking earlier, you know, scissors and all that stuff. And you guys were talking mm -hmm. about jig heads. Yep. A lot of people don't. I saw Brandon Townsville comment earlier. He keeps it on till he loses it. <laughs> you know, oh. I've got some, you know, some guys around here and they got to have a gold jig head or they got to have a pink jig head. And, and uh, Jeff, I'm sure you got some of this too, but I actually carry some in my, in my boat. It's just powder paint. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I, you know, I've got a bunch of blank jig head, jig heads in my boat. If you got a lighter in your pocket, yep, you light that up for about five seconds and dip that in that, you've got you a pink jig head. If pink's your favorite or whatever, I meant. Mm -hmm. There's also it's just another another thing you can carry in your boat. It doesn't take up much space. You got a jar of this and a jar of this and a pair of scissors. I mean, the the combinations are are endless. That's right. Yeah. Some good stuff. What's your Jeff? I'm gonna go ahead and ask you right here. And, and I got the question sun up, sun down, fishing. Very cool name again. What's your five best colors of top hat jigs for stained water? Texas colors, he says. Stained water? Mm. I'd probably have to say, uh, it, well, my favorite color is probably gonna be, uh, Gosh, blue pearl, blue pearl, blue pearl, and blue yeah. pearl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Since, we're in, since we're in Texas, he's mentioned Texas. We created a color just for Texas. It's called Boondocks, and it's like, yeah. a, it's like yeah. a dark gray, dark silver. I don't yeah. have one in front of me. The body's a dark, dark gray, dark silver, and then it's got this blue pearl. It's got yep. that blue pearl tail. So yeah. It's, that's like yeah. a natural, real yeah, and that 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 yeah, you can't go wrong with that one. Uh, that'd be a good one to have. And then if you felt like you need to spice it up a little bit, give it a little spike it for taste and dip that tail. You know, if it's orange or, or what it could be. But yeah, that'd be a good you one. You use mayfly, mayfly too, don't you, Jeff? I do, yes, I do. I, I do like mayfly. I do. I do. Uh, I like it a lot. Mm. We'll squeeze that one in there. And I know something about mayflies this past week, and I don't know about Alabama, but um the man mayflies are out and, and they were real thick last week i actually shot a video that uh hopefully i'll get out here real soon and, and i really keyed in on mayflies and, and those fish were just smoking anything that resembled a mayfly because they were you know crappie actually eat especially i think black crappie when we're talking about black crappie i think they eat a whole lot of bugs and that's probably where the dark colors come from yeah, but, good. Uh, you know, white crappie as well. They they were really keying in on mayflies last week. Yeah, it's, it's getting that time of year. Fishing Orange with Trey. Fish. I think I know who Trey is. <laughs> He's uh on the top hat. Do you modify the tail, Jeff? I yeah. show us some of those modifications you got again, and I'm gonna. I'm gonna be clipping away on one here. Uh, let's see if I can if I can uh, let me get this right right here. That's one of them. If you can see it, uh, yeah. Right. There. That's just me. That's just with the, like the little inch and a half. I just cut the V in the tail. Uh, and I was that's pretty much what I all, only the altercations I do to them really. Mm -hmm. And you know, like Derek said earlier, some people cut it to where it looks like a paintbrush. You know, putting multiple slits in it. Uh, I personally have never tried that, but uh, looks good. But just for my confidence, uh, you know, I'm just cutting it, mm -hmm. putting little V's in the tail. I've seen some guys do this too, where that, I mean, I cut a V, I can't hardly hold it still. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Wobble so much. There you go. I made one side wider than the other. Yeah. just yeah. Just another. Yeah, that's fine, but then my OCD starts. I won't throw. You know, you know, I even think about this one here is just that straight body. 
action that for that tail. Yeah, that's that's pretty neat there. Yeah, it's kind of got the uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I like that. But I think yeah. there's even the cutting down the the head part. I mean, you can cut down this size with these scissors. Yeah, yep. That's what I did with those right there. I took that two inch and cut it down. I cut the yeah. cut the little off the head. And then it makes it flush, you know, slides up on that collar good, up flush with the head of the jig. Well, definitely, y'all guys take advantage of this. Uh, from Top Hat Jigs, you get 15% off using the discount code 10K Crappie Connection. Uh, appreciate everybody having the patience and sticking around for us tonight. I've had a blast. And it actually sounds like, Jeff, I'm sending some thunderstorms your way, so you'll probably get them in a couple of hours from now. Oh, great. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Hey, long as, I hope you, you kept the tornadic activity out of it, didn't you? Yeah, thankfully tonight we did. I, I didn't hear any sirens going off, but that yeah. could happen still here in Mississippi. Yeah. It's been going to happen. Well, that's right. I just don't want to be up pacing the hall like expecting father all night. Uh, I don't need that happening. <clears throat> I want to ask you something else, and I've got some buddies from Alabama that actually I went over to, uh, uh, I guess about two weeks ago, we went turkey hunting in Alabama, but they everybody over there called them crappy. And I noticed that you're you're actually calling them crappie. Is that a regional thing in Alabama? Crappy, crappie. Uh, you know, crappie is probably for me. Uh, but I, I do hear a lot of that crappy. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just like some of these these lakes down here. I don't, you know, what? There's one lake here. Uh, I call Jordan. It hell, it's spelled Jordan. But if you talk to these old timers, oh, we went down to Jordan. You know, it's Jordan. You know, it's Jordan. Or crappy, but it's it's with an A, so I would say crappy would probably be pretty accurate. Um, go ahead and I want to hear what's going on in your neck of the woods right now as far as the bite. What's happening? Oh, God, man, I tell you what, it, it, it's all over the place. It's, uh, you know, um, it it's, it's any you know, however you want to catch them, you can get them. Um, that's going to change here real quick, though. Uh you can catch them six foot. Well, you can catch them. I've caught them. To be honest with you, I was talking to Derek earlier. I had a, uh, I had two great little girls that I took and their dad uh, last week, and uh, picked them up. We fished for a little bit deeper fish. They whacked on them. Uh, we went, you know, I dropped them off and I was fixing and put it on the trailer and go home. And I said, well, you know, I'm gonna go out here. It's just too daggum nice. Wind's not 30 miles an hour, so I'm gonna enjoy it a little bit. Well, I went to a spot that I haven't fished this year, and I had to push in there. Now I'm gonna tell you, I was a little bit nervous. You know, when you got that transducer on that trolling motor shaft, uh, I put, I was boat was rolling off these stumps that were probably big around as a hood of a truck, and I finally got in there just to check it, and I would, I turned that live scope and I started sweeping 50, 55 foot, and I was just sweeping timber everywhere. Yeah, but I would see a piece and it would be covered up, and I'm thinking you got to be kidding me. So I'd fire off over there to them, and man, I got my arm broke. Uh, very first one I stuck, she got hung on top of that stump, and I saw a boil. I thought dead gum spotted green fish ditch pickle, and then when she come off, I rolled her, and it was a giant. Well, they were all over that flat on uh, on these stumps, and I, they were probably at the most five foot six foot deep but i was catching them they was as high up on that now my boat's sitting in 15 foot of water and this timber comes all the way up and just barely doesn't even break the surface but they were stacked up in there probably most of them anywhere from two to four foot and it was a blast and i, I pulled on a couple of them and i eased out of there and i haven't been back since but you know uh but then i can go out to a to a hump or and and catch them off bottom in 18 foot of water and they're just laid up they're not on anything they're just laying in the mud and they and those are good fish too most of them have spawned i mean you, you'll uh you'll catch a good one and get her in the boat and then when you turn her sideways she disappears so she's got that summertime body you know and then you might go throw in there again and pull out one like she swallowed a golf ball so right now we're, we're kind of Kind of, you know, we're wrapping it up though. It, that spawn's about done. I know uh, us, and it seems like to me that this year these fish in central Mississippi started spawning probably the first week in March. Mm -hmm. We got some cool weather, and they kind of cooled it back off for a while, and they got back busy and, and getting their thing going. 
but they're still spawning. I still think I'll probably be catching some spawning fish for another two or three weeks. Yeah. But it gets to this latter part of the spawn for me, and I mentioned it last week on today's bike show. But, you know, I'm looking for these, and I had quite a few people actually message me this weekend that they come across breeder stumps, and I talked about that a little bit. So, uh, you know, towards the end of the spawn, it gets to be harder to find spawning fish, but they're very isolated in, in particular areas yeah. uh, on particular stumps, and that sounds kind of mm-hmm. like what you got even ran into. Yeah, it was. I mean, in this place, I, I mean, as far as I could see, it's a stump field and you got to troll in there. I mean, you'll lose that lower unit if you don't. But uh, um, it was weird, you know, and you would think with they'd be on every stump because they all look sexy. They all look good. They all got the right. But for some reason, out of 100 stumps, they're all piled up on one. Yep. It's, it's a stump like that. But. When they all show up and they, they're on that, and they look like half dollars on there, you know that uh, that's what you want. Because I can't stand nothing to pull up to, a, you know, and see a bunch of little old rinky dink males. You know, I'll, if I'm out there for pleasure, <laughs> I'm gone. I'd rather get 10 bites than I would 50 all day long, you know, and 10 good ones. That's just me. But that's how it was. There it goes. What's going on up there in the big Illinois? Uh, actually, Dean and I went to the lake today, and uh, our power plant lake, and so they've spawned out on the warm arm side because what lake? it's like Clinton Lake. Okay. And uh, and uh, so we we fished the west side, uh, the cooler side, and the and the water temp is fifty nine to sixty ones, and we just beat the banks today. We mm-hmm. just casted. And we just wore them out. And you, you were talking about the breeder stumps the other day. I remember you talking about that. We hit a couple yep. stumps today that, I mean, it was just nuts. You know, just as fast as you could cast in there, you'd catch them. It'd be a lot of smalls. But, uh, you know, we're just getting right into the, you know. Hard of This week is going to be the hardest spawn. I mean, it's going to be 85 all week and sunny, and this is going to be the gut slot. You know, but we did. We did catch some on some brush piles today too, you know, 14 feet deep. The brush piles were loaded. We could catch them on that, but man, it was just fun to. I mean, you got your life scope on and in the water, but you're not really using it. You're just foot on the trolling motor, just covering as much bank as you can, and just reeling them in as fast as you can. Mm. What, what was your best color, or did I miss that? <laughs> <laughs> You keep it up, I'm going to rename that bait, I'm telling you. <laughs> the hill topper. <laughs> mm. That's going to be the chapel topper. Yeah. <laughs> i got a, a question from James. He's at, asking, in the middle of summertime, where will you start looking for black crappie? And, uh, you know, I can answer some of that too, but my kind of goes with white and black crappie, but go ahead and spill the beans there, Jeff. We're in the middle of summertime. Where are you going to look for black crop? Dad, you talk about dog days of summer. I'm going to be out on the river uh, 100% on the river on ledges, uh, drop offs, um, break lines, stuff like that. And I'm looking for structure on it. And they're going to all be ganged up. I mean, you might pull up on one, there'll be 200 fish on it. And uh, you pull up there, you're going to have to get the hot fish and then pick the trolling motor up and get on because, I mean, it. At least here on this lake, it's how it is. But yeah, it's going to be on the river, drop off ledges and uh, structure on the brake lines. Do those fish, I know like on the reservoir, <clears throat> Ross Barnett, what I'm referring to mainly, but it seems to me I have a particular depth in mind that, you know, you can just about always count on if you're fishing in this, and I'm going to say 11 foot deep, and that's that's really gospel for me. But um, do you have a particular depth that always comes depth? comes to your mind the area you're fishing yes yeah i do uh i'm usually between that 18 and 20 foot when you wow. are you walking about dog days of summer yeah yeah i'm, I'm usually around that 18 mark 18 okay. 20. i don't really like to go any deeper than that uh it seems like when you do if you do pull them up from any you know any depths 25 or something like that which i, I can't that's brutal for me but you better throw her in the box because she's not going to make it. Mm-hmm. The pressure, she's not going to make mm-hmm. it. Um, so, but, yeah, it's probably going to be between that 15 to 18. 
have you uh, I've got this question have you either of you fished Toledo Bend? I have not. I have not. I have. And it's been about six, seven years ago, and I fished about seven days down there. And let me tell you, they're Cajun, the crappie Cajun LLC. You've got a great fishery down there that loads up, and I cannot imagine, man, summertime down there has to be just tremendous. I hear a lot of good stories about that lake. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I recall pulling up to brush piles and literally it looked like it would be two or 3,000 fish sitting on some giant brush piles down there. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, when it goes back to me, and I'm going to talk about black and cro white crappie because we've got a good mixture here. Um, you know, I'm going to look for, just like Jeff said, ledges that have some kind of brush that, that seems to just concentrate a lot of fish up on them. I like yeah. casting to them as well. And I like, like I said earlier, you know, a bait as small as that, this one I've got cut down. And I'm sorry, Derek, but I really butchered this one. But, but hey, whatever it, works. You catch fish. Yeah. Like, you know, I would butcher it down to, you know, that's probably half an inch I've got to cut down to. And uh, so downsize in the summertime sit back from those fish and cast to them. And I think you'll, especially in Toledo Bend, since that, that was brought up, man, that's a, that's a great fishery. Um, appreciate everybody coming on tonight and having some patience. Uh, had a blast talking with you, fellas. It was a great time. Yeah, we, we got it all. We got it done. And uh, yeah, <laughs> appreciate Top Hat Jigs for sponsoring us tonight. And we're going to do some more of them. Yeah, you know, we appreciate it, Brad. Till next time, you got Brad Chapel, Derek Martin. There you go. Yep. And Jeff Giles. All right, guys. I appreciate everybody tonight. See y'all guys you. Tuesday night. And I'm heading to Grenada in Enid Lake. So, if, and I got some hats with me. So, anybody up there and you see me up there, Black Duramax, a big crappie connection boat. Um, you go, are you going this week? You coming weekend? I'm going tomorrow morning. Are you? Yeah, I'm thinking about coming this coming weekend. I'll, I'll be there until Friday. Yeah. So, right. anybody in that area, if you see me out on the lake, give me a shout. Cannot appreciate all the support that we're getting for the Crappie Connection. And I'll see you guys Tuesday night. See you then, Brad. See you. Right. Thanks. All right, guys.